Do you think that you know all there is to know from the Word of God? And you couldn't possibly need Bible school. Well, let's take the next hour and unplug from this world and plug into a biblical perspective where we will discover from the Word of God that preparation time is never wasted time. Hear the stories of people from all over the world whose lives have been radically transformed through the Word of God. Welcome to Karis Unplugged. Hi, everybody. I want to welcome you to this episode of Karis Unplugged. I'm so excited that you've tuned in with us today on this weekend episode, and I'm so excited to get into the content with my very special guest, Pastor Rick McFarland. So welcome, Pastor Rick. He uh, is not only a pastor of a church down in Colorado Springs, but he is also an instructor, one of our favorite instructors at Karis Bible College. And so I love these weekend episodes. We get to take time to get into testimonies mm -hmm. and just mine the wealth of wisdom that's on the inside of you, because you, there's a lot of wisdom on the inside of you. Did you know that, Pastor? I took it by faith. <laughs> Amen. So I always like to start off understanding, were you always a lover of the Word? Were you born again at a young age? Were you born again older? Uh, please expound. I was born again when I was 12. Okay. So I didn't come out of the womb hungering for the Word of God. <laughs> But, but uh, yeah, when I was 12, and really not when I was born again, I was born again uh, in a denomination. Okay. And so they just taught salvation every single week. Okay, with great. With a lot of discipleship. Okay, And yes. so it wasn't until I came back to the Lord in uh, college. Okay. And so the Lord met me in a bar one night and didn't realize uh, that was going to happen. I just felt like totally out of place. Felt like um, I was supposed to leave. And so I went home and I flipped through the TV and there was a show, a Christian show, talking about, and the, the minister was saying, you're out there, you know Jesus, but you're far away from him, he's calling you back. Wow. And so I just knew that he was calling me. So I went to the nearest uh, church of that denomination and, but uh, I set it up, it was uh, a spirit-filled church. Okay. And so that's when I got an intense hunger for the word of God and, and starting in discipled. So there was nothing, I, I want to get back to this, the Lord met you in a bar, which he's always meeting people in bars, but um, it was just this intense feeling like you didn't want to be there. Is yeah. that really what it was? Yeah, like so, you didn't fit or like, what was that? Yeah. So or was there something that happened? When I'll I first came uh, as a student, I would go out once or twice a week, Yeah. but then over the first two, three years, all of a sudden it was coming out almost most of the nights. And right. so my life was just really going down Yeah. and really being empty. But I was in a bar one night and it just seemed like everything almost went slow motion. And wow. I just felt, uh, I just felt like an evil presence. It's like, I don't belong here. Wow. I, I, I need to leave. So I just left and I went home, flipped the TV on and that's when the minister ministered to me. Actually, the next night I got dressed again, went to the same bar. No way. And in 10 minutes, the same feeling came on me and I left and never went back. Wow. And that's when that weekend, I that Sunday, I went to that church, got discipled, uh, just got on fire for, the, for God and, and just was voracious for the Word of God. That is so awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. So that kind of started your journey in this direction of where you are today as pastor. Yes. So did it happen overnight? Let's talk about this journey because um, the whole reason for this episode is I know a lot of people that feel like, oh, I already know that or, oh, I don't. And I talked to a lot of people about Bible school in my previous role, and I would hear people all the time be like, "Oh no, I've been on the I've been on the mission field for 15 years. I don't need Bible school." And I'm thinking, "Ouch!" Because and and maybe all Bible schools, but but not all Bible schools have the Word of God as your only textbook. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear when I would hear that, I would think, "Oh man, I do, I never want to be to the place where I say I don't need Bible school." So let's talk about this discipleship and how you knew. You were supposed to go to Bible school. Was that instantaneous after these experiences? 
No, I, I didn't know I was called to ministry. All I know is I had an intense desire to study the Word. Okay. And so I worked in a Christian bookstore, and I had to spend all my paycheck on Bible translations, commentaries, dictionaries. Really? Uh, and stuff like that. And I just would look up every single word in the original language and yeah. get the definitions. I just had it. No one told me to do that. It was an intense desire to do it. Wow. And so... Um, I just, uh, one day I was trying to get a job. Uh, I had a degree in marketing. Okay. And so I tried to get a sales job and yeah. it just wasn't working out. Okay. And then one day the Lord just spoke to my heart. He says, I've called you to the ministry and I want you to go to Bible school. Okay. And so I was just out of, uh, you, you don't know what you don't know. And so he right. told me I needed to go. So I decided, okay, I better go. Okay. Yeah. So how long did you spend at that Bible school? Uh, it was a two year school. Okay. Are we allowed to say the Bible school? It, it's up to you. Yeah, it was Rama Bible Training Center. Okay, with so Kenneth went to e. Hagen, and so when okay. I joined that Bible, uh, that that church um, that I got discipled in, you had a, a, a young group. They were all on Copenhagen. They're all <laughs> listening to <laughs> Kenneth Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagen. <laughs> so we, we, so I got discipled of the Word of Faith because it's still yes. the Word of Faith movement in the late 80s. Yes, okay. And so um, I just got discipled in that. So I just knew that that's where the Lord was calling me. So I went to Rama Bible. There wasn't a Karis Bible College that started in 94. Right. And I went to Bible College 91 to 93. Oh, wow. And so that was where God had me. Yeah. Okay. So did you come out of Bible school being like, oh, yeah, I know exactly oh, yeah. what to do now? Absolutely. I, I thought I knew everything. You did? Yeah. And so uh, so the, the Lord, I was working a secular job and the Lord says, I want you in full-time ministry. I said, okay, Lord, what do I need to do? He says, well, you go to your church, go to the HR department and I'll take it from there. I said, well, great. So I was uh, driving up to the church and I thought, okay, they're going to have a high level position for me there Yeah. because I'm Bible school graduate. <laughs> and so I got in there and, and so I, I was asking all the leaders that were in high positions, maybe they'd stepped out, stepped down, but I get <laughs> it put one? in there. Which position? And they found a perfect opportunity as janitor oh, wow. of the Christian school. And so I said, Lord, don't you know who I am? <laughs> I've been to, I have a college degree and I've been to Bible school. And, and so do you not know who I am? He says, yes, you're janitor. <laughs> So, so how did you step into that with a positive attitude? Uh, I didn't at first. You didn't? No. Uh, I was embarrassed. Really? People would ask me, what do you do? And what I would, would you say, say, I help at the Christian school. Okay. And then, But they wouldn't let it go. Well, what? <laughs> what how do, do you help at the Christian school? Help? Right. I help. Well, <laughs> how do you help? And so I'm, I was, I'm a janitor. <laughs> You're what? I'm a janitor. I'm a janitor. I was embarrassed. <laughs> right. And so, but I, but I realized that was a humbling time. Amen. Because I had to find out my, who I am is not rooted in what I do. Yeah. And he had to really root it in my identities in him, not what I do, because I'm not, I wouldn't be ready. I'd be misused the positions I'm in yeah. now uh, for my own self-worth. Yeah. And so he couldn't use me the way he wants to use me. So I had, to, he had to take me to that Backside of the wilderness, backside of the janitor. <laughs> backside so, of the toilet. Backside of the toilet. So I started with First John, Second John, Third John ministry. Praise and then God. I got a revelation <laughs> of humility and my identity in the Lord. Yeah. So I'm, I think about that and I know a lot of people in ministry, um, I don't know that they would all do that. Some will not. Some yeah. will not. Uh, yeah. Even though we want to claim that we're, that we're humble. But when the rubber meets the road, will we actually yeah. come to work every day, have a positive attitude about it, and do what the Lord has placed for you to do? So there's a certain level of pride that's attached to that, right? Yes. Right. <clears throat> Did you struggle with pride growing up? Or do you think this pride was coming from Bible school? Because yeah. knowledge puffs up, right? Well, pride can be either, well, I'm better than other people, or pride can be, I'm worse, I'm than, worse other than other people. I'm worse than other people. So when I first came, uh, when I first... When I was younger, it was the other kind of pride because oh, of the background I came good. out of. Right. Yeah, rejection and stuff like that. Yeah. But someone that has a has a rejection form, if they get put in a position that can easily swing to the other side mm. because you're trying to bolster up your self-worth, anyhow yeah. you can get it. And so I did it through my knowledge. I know so much. So right. now that's my security. 
Wow. Okay, so how did you practically, because this is what I want viewers, I want you guys to take away today is, is how do you practically apply that? <laughs> Be like, okay, I'm, I'm humble. I'm going to come to work with a positive attitude because it may not be a janitor role. Maybe it's another role that you never thought in a million years you would be doing. How do you every day maintain that positive attitude? And maybe you don't do it right. And, but how do you work through that? Yeah. It had to come down to my personal relationship with the Lord. There we go. That, um, that's really what brings satisfaction is you're walking wherever you're at with the Lord. Right. And so he's with you. And so he, his view of you doesn't change based on your circumstances. Right. And so your circumstances change, but if you know his view of you and you have that view of him, uh, you can actually be fruitful anywhere. That's what Christianity is, the power of Christianity. Yeah. You can drop a spirit-filled drawing upon Jesus Christian in any environment. Amen. Amen. Whether it's persecution or if it is in luxury, Paul says, I've, I've, I've learned how to abase and to abound, to have suffer need and to uh, abound. So he learned in whatever circumstances, the inner secret was Christ strengthening him, Amen. his relationship with Jesus on the inside of him. And that being what holds you steady. Right. Yeah. And so I, I got to a point to where I said, Lord, if this is the if this is all you've called me to do, then I am going to do it with all of my heart. Amen. I'm going to do it with joy, do it with excellence. Amen. And when I got to that place, that's when I got promoted. I got to be over the janitors. That's awesome. I had minions. Did you <laughs> did you have a shirt with your name on it? No, they didn't oh, do. Bummer. I didn't even get. I didn't been. even get in a shirt with a name. So. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that good. Got no, it wasn't that good. No. <laughs> so I think that is um, amazing, and I think God brings all of us through that in a certain level. Because as you're sharing, I'm thinking the same thing. Uh, when I left Bible school, like I signed up to lead a a Karis, um Bible study, right? And they're mm. like, <clears throat> all over the world, you know, you can be a part of this Karis, and there's thousands of people who want to be a part of a Karis Bible study. And so I signed up to be a leader. Not one person. I was living in a city of like 7 million people and not one person oh. signs up. Right. And yeah. I was like, okay. And then I was going to this church, a like thousand member church. I was serving, serving, serving. I get this open door of opportunity to have a class. And it was like, uh, they called it a university uh, with the, the church's name, university. So it was like for those members that wanted to, you know, get deeper in their relationship mm -hmm. with God, thousand member church, not one person said, so I was like, okay, Lord, at the end of the day, and you know, you come out of Bible school. And for me, I was like, I wanted to share all these amazing truths yep. with anybody that would listen. Right. And nobody wanted to listen. They were staying away by the thousands. They were. And, but it was in that moment where it's like, okay, God, if not a single person wants to hear a word that I say, I'm good because I got you, yeah. but you give me the opportunity and I'm on it. But I think it's a beautiful thing how you have to go through that. Mm -hmm. And I don't see everybody go through that. Do you think everybody goes through that or not? No, I think some people, they get into a comfort zone mm. and they're not willing to be stretched and come out of their comfort zone. Right. And so I think there's multitudes called to Bible school that just said someday, yes, they have excuses, I'll right. do that. It's right. just like in Jesus with the parable of the wedding, you know, come yes. come to the banquet. Exactly. Well, I've I can't I'm right too now. busy, I just it got will. married, yeah. I got all these excuses. Right. And they just don't and that's that's just the way of saying I'm not ready to be drawn out of a comfort zone. Mm, that's so good. Yeah. I love that. So well, fortunately you and I got to go through that, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> We would not be, it was preparation to be able to where we're at now because, Amen. you know, people, people know us and, yeah. but you know, right. our work doesn't come through being known no. or being, having a stage or having a church or right. having anything. And so uh, we full well know that who we are outside Jesus, Yeah. <laughs> uh, nothing with the rim knocked off, zero <laughs> exactly. with the rim knocked off, or, the rim. you know, in him. We're, the, we're his righteousness based on his gift and his love. Right. And so we don't get our worth through what people's opinions or lack of it. So. Right. Or whether we're sitting on a set or not sitting on a set. Yeah. So, yeah, I can We'd be see. comfortable, you know, serving anywhere. 
absolutely absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. and totally uh sometimes it looks um appealing yeah. <laughs> to be like <laughs> man i could just put on some earphones and listen to mm -hmm. teaching all day long and worship mm -hmm. and uh yeah so anyway so you go you're fresh out of bible school you're like i'm gonna change the world was my heart when yeah. i left bible school and so here you are you humbled yourself you became the leader there, yes. then what happened? So I I was uh, over the janitors for a while. Okay. And so God didn't say, well, do this for a certain amount of time and then right. I'll, I'll move you on. Right. So as far as I could see was... That was it. Was That was it. And so uh, one day the associate pastor uh, came in and took me to lunch and says, we would like you to come and help... Uh, promote the Bible school we have here at the church. Okay. And we also want you to teach in the Bible school. I was like, oh, Joseph is coming out of <laughs> out of the dungeon. And so, because I, I had my heart to teach right, in a Bible school. Right. I didn't know how that would ever work. And yeah. Didn't think I'd teach at Rhema. And, yeah. But I, want, I just knew that I'd teach in a Bible school. Yeah. And so there, they opened the door. And so I started teaching her for about a year and helping, because I had a marketing degree. Right. Like that will help market the school. I was like, yeah. There we go. And so anyway, so I did that for a year. And then the social pastor came in again and said, well, we need you to take over the bookstore uh, because the lady's leaving. And since you worked in a bookstore, <laughs> you can run one. Yeah. And so your, your past leads you to what you're doing. And so, um, and I said, yeah, but I really felt like my spot was in the Bible school. And he says, you can still teach in the Bible school, but we need you to take over the bookstore. If you do that, you're going to be a department head. We'll ordain you. Ooh. And there's quite a bit of a raise. And I said, I feel led. I feel. <laughs> I, that's you God. Say, Let me pray about it. Right, right. So I did that, and then I did that for a few years, and then they made me over all of the education over the Christian school, the Bible school, wow. and so with five years just from serving, yeah, um, cleaning things up around the church, yeah, to being one of the head leads of the church for about five years. Wow. And then I got laid off. There was a. There, unfortunately, there was a scandal in the in the okay. the school okay. that hit the news. Oh no! And so it slowly just started declining. And my main pay was through education, the, right? And through the Christian school. So I got laid off, and so for eleven months, I could not super almost supernatural could not find a job. Eleven months. Eleven months. And I'd you're put, still married today. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Were you married then? I, it's not like I sat at home and didn't try. I tried. <laughs> And I was, I was overqualified, or and so I put out things in the church for pastoring for. Wow! For and this, you were appropriate in your faith. I, I was, bet. yeah, I, I was definitely, and but I was just so frustrated. God, why are you? And I had to go back. He's my source. Yeah. Until you know God's your source, it's easy to say He's your source. Yeah. And so my self worth was in Him, and I really was in what I was producing, and and so God met every need. We never lacked anything. Wow. But, uh, That's why you're then, still married today. <laughs> yes, I'm still married today. Thank and finally, I got a dream. My dream job opened up delivering pizza. <laughs> Jeez, did any of the pizza make it to the delivery location? Um, a few. <laughs> For those of you that don't know, Pastor Rick loves pizza. So you had to sit and drive and smell pizza the whole That's time. Right, wow. Yeah. That's your golden. That's right. That, that was, was your it. open that was door it. that you went and through. And so one night I was... I couldn't find the place where I was supposed to deliver the pizza. Yeah. I was so frustrated. I was like, God, what are you doing in my life? That you was know? before like I've been GPS to Rayma Bible School and I'm yeah. in ministry and I was in ministry there at the church and then I got laid off and now I'm in the wilderness. What's going on? Right, right. And so towards the end of that time of about a year of delivering pizza, God called us. We just came out for Summer Family Bible Conference just on vacation. Wow. In the middle of that um we had they had extension school directors that started extension school. Yes, and they started talking about starting Bible schools, and and all of a sudden it just hit me. It's like, whoa, that's it. That's it. I'm supposed to come out, go to Karis Bible College, right. go to three years, go back to Tulsa, and start an extension school, Bible school. Wow. And maybe get to teach. I don't know. And yeah. so uh, I talked to my wife. She wasn't totally on board it right then, <laughs> but she, the Lord spoke to her, and so we came out. And so the Lord told me, you know, don't tell anybody that you had taught in the Bible school. You, you had taught in the main services for Bobby Andean, which is a large church in Tulsa. Right. And um, just be quiet and you just, I'll open the doors from there. I said, okay. okay. So I got there. I just started out in the phone center. Oh, yeah. And you yeah. raised, was it Fluffy? 
or PT? No, no. Was? It, one one night, this lady, <laughs> one night a lady called up, and uh-huh. so late at night it's usually when the call interesting calls. Interesting come. calls come. And yes. so a lady called and said, "I want you to raise my dead pe- my dead parakeet Peachy from the oh dead. parakeet Peachy." Yes, and so uh, she told me. Well, I called in the night before. And I asked the lady to raise Peachy, and so she asked me where Peachy was, and I told her Peachy was buried in the backyard. <laughs> and so she said, well, you probably need to dig Peachy up, or she'll, underground, she might die again. So she went outside, and now I'm on the phone with freshly excavated Peachy. And so she asked me, I need you to raise him from the dead. And you got And she put pressure on me, and she said, you got to do it quick. Because my husband's about to come home. Oh, he no. doesn't believe in this. I almost told her, I don't believe in this. But I didn't. So I spoke the word of God. I said, Peachy, live in Jesus' name. Click. So either up. the either the husband came home or Peachy came back to or live. Or Peachy came back to life. So we'll I never just marked know. down on the report card, Peachy lives. <laughs> so, so I did that for a year. And so, you know, it wasn't the easiest job just right. talking right. through people's problems all day yeah. long. but. It was a it was a tremendous ministry training period, but I'm like God, what's going on? And so uh, then a job opened up for me to be over correspondence. Yes, yes. To where I grade, they would back in they would take tests and yes. send it back in. And so I interned doing that. So I was in the cubicle Loved grading it. tests and stuff. The red pen. And so, but I'm like God, what's going on? I'm called to ministry. And right. Nothing seems to happen. My life's going somewhere, uh, going nowhere really fast. <laughs> we're like yeah. we're driving fast that's down right. the road. Yeah. And so God calls to go to third year. So we go to third year ministry school. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of third year, then just grading tests for a job. And then in the middle of the third year, Greg Moore, which was over the ministry school, mm-hmm. called me into his office. Mm-hmm. I'm like, why am I being called into Dean Moore's office? Yeah. Because he was dean of education right. as well. And so, so Greg tells me, he says, well... We are looking at possibly starting another third year school called the School of Biblical Studies. Okay. Where we'll teach uh, people book by book by book, verse by verse. And so to set this up, I study, that's why I study verse right. by verse, book by book. And so whenever I'm done with a study, I'll put it on my website. And so I told Joanne that I finished a chapter in, in the Bible and I put it up on my website. She said, Well, did you put it on Facebook? I said, No, I don't. I tried that. I only get one or two likes, pearls before swine. <laughs> Nobody so, cares. No one cares. They're not going to read 50-page commentary, you know, right. on Facebook. So, right. And so Joanne says, no, I think you need to put it on Facebook. I said, no. Yeah, no. Do you want to eat? Yes. Yes. <laughs> on Facebook so, it goes. So it's on Facebook. One or two <laughs> likes, see? <laughs> And so she would sniff it out every time. She goes, did you get done with the cha- your chapter? She would. Did you put it on your website? Yes. Did you put it on Facebook? I said, no. Put it on Facebook. And so like, what is your deal? She, was like, <laughs> she goes, just do it. I said, okay. And so I'm in Dean Moore's office, Greg Moore. Yeah. And he says, we, um, we really want to start the school. And so Barry Bennett and I have been on Facebook reading your commentaries. What? And... Uh, so we know you can do this, and we heard you teach in teaching labs in third year mm-hmm. and that you could teach. And so um, it helps to listen to your wife. I was going to say, uh, somebody heard the voice of God. The older I get, the more the Holy Spirit sounds like my wife. Oh, praise God. Listen up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, so then at that point, he goes, okay, well, I've never been in a situation where I going in. I don't know. I'm going in for an interview. Right. I'm offered a job. Yeah. And then he says, "Well, if you're going to, I guess, then I need your resume." Oh, you're like, that's not usually how that works. No, it's not. You do, you Did you have way. your resume? No, ready? I didn't know. I didn't. So I went home and I put down everything I'd done in the church, and I gave it to him, and he was blown away that I'd done all that stuff Amen. and never said and anything and never promoted yourself because the Lord specifically said, "Do not promote yourself." Amen. Let me open the doors for you. Amen. And God opened the door, and then I just came on and said, well, we're not ready to start that school yet, so why don't you come in and, and you could be the coordinator for ministry school yeah, and be assistant. I met you. Yeah, an assistant dean of education, so I was his yes. assistant. And so uh, that's when he asked, well, we need to have a course for night school to fit in. Do you have a course okay. you can do in night school? Yeah. 
And so I looked through the curriculum and there wasn't a course on how to study the Bible. How to study the Bible, there you so go. So I put that together and it became an elective in night school. An elective, school. yeah, then an elective in Then it became an elective during ministry. day school. Oh. And then it became a mandatory elective. That's awesome. And then Greg says, Pastor Greg says, do you have another one? And so the Principles of Grace and Faith came out. And so that night school, day school, and, wow. and so one course after another. So that's how I started teaching. And so I never knocked the door open, never opened. I just knew at the end of my first year that I would be teaching here at Karis. Wow. I never told anyone because it, how many people say, yeah, I'm right. going to teach at Karis. Yes. And, but I just, at first I was like, no, you're just, that's, that's just your own wishing. But I just so strong on the inside of it. I finally told my wife, I know that I'm going to be teaching here. And he, so, but I didn't open the door, didn't kick it open, didn't tell anybody. And so the Lord opened it up. So, and then while you were teaching, what was your title before you went to full-time pastoring? Do you remember? I was, okay, so I was, I started out uh, with Greg as assistant dean of education. Right. He became director of Karis and I became the dean of education. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. And then okay. I moved from dean of education to dean of, inst of, of instru faculty. Of faculty, that's what yeah, it was. Yeah, so I was in dean of faculty, but then God full-time uh, led me to go to the church. So. Yes. So I want to make sure and mention um, Pastor Rick's church, which is River Rock Church in Colorado Springs. You can go to riverrockchurch.net. You can hear some of his teaching. You can find out their service times, where they're located. I would encourage you to check that out and make sure and go visit their church. Him and him and Pastor Joanne are absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, um, okay. So my question is that it's, during all this time, I know we've kind of touched on it, but during all this time of walking this out, which you still are, mm -hmm. was there ever like a time where you wanted to quit? Well, when I was in that phone center time. And so okay. it was kind of difficult day every day because people have real rough, tough, hard situations, call yeah. after call after call. And, and so it was very difficult to say, no, nope, this is where God has me. And I have to draw upon the spirit of God, the word of God to stay strong in yeah. this. And so I felt like I just wanted to quit. But the Lord's like, no, nope, stick in, stick in. And, and it's that same just mindset of being faithful where you're at, huh? Yeah. Being found faithful. Yeah. Because you run for things, but usually you can't run from yourself. No. And so it's really a situation in you that needs to be dealt with. And so you think it's your circumstance. So you run and you hop out of it, but then you find yourself. So if you have situations to where you, you have, you go from job to job, to job, you go from church to church, to church, you go from relationship, 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 you got to find out one day you're the common denominator. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> and so instead of running, I'm going to stay in here. I'm going to let the Lord deal with this. Amen. And so I, I can grow. So I kind of want to adjust a little bit and talk about what ministry you had when you met your wife and what you guys continued to do, which was singles ministry. Yep. And I think it's something that we don't talk about nearly enough in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. I find that growing up, there were two main subjects that I never heard about in church, which was relationships and finances. Yep. And I'm like... Well, what's happening, people, that yeah. we're not hearing about this stuff? Because those are the two that will completely make or break your life. Right. Right? Yeah. So what is your experience in the, um, as walking through the singles ministry, what do you think is the number one hang up today um, of, of people choosing the wrong one? Because there's the statistic that something like 70% of people that get married get divorced. Right. And a lot of those are in the church. Is right. maybe 70 or 80 percent. I just heard this the other day. We'll probably, I mean, you can fact check me on that, but that's a lot. Yeah. And, and the church is not immune to that. Why right. do you think that is, Pastor Rick? I think the biggest thing isn't that I married the wrong person, is I'm the wrong person. Mm. You haven't dealt with your issues. Okay. And you haven't learned to um, let the Lord heal you of past things. Yeah. Haven't learned to, to make you a bedrock in his love, his identity. And because for years, for, for millennium, there's been arranged marriages. I know. It wasn't you married the one you love, you no. love the one you're with. <laughs> there's a song. <laughs> right. And so, and, and, and so I'm not saying that we shouldn't love the one 
that we marry. <laughs> and and right. so I'm all for that. But I think a lot of times you think, well, I just married the wrong person. But no, you haven't learned to deal with the emotional issues that come up. And when you have your issues and they have their issues and you get them into yeah. marriage, it's, it just multiplies. Right. And so marriage is a, is a magnifying lens of what good or bad. Right. And so I, that's why premarital counseling is so important. Yeah. It's because you have one river that's a nice smooth river, another smooth river. But when they meet, there's white water. There's white water. Where there's and boulders brass. and undealt with stuff <laughs> and past. That and, come out, right? Yeah. And so premarital counseling is to help them see unforeseen boulders because they're, they just, they're, they're Twitter pated. I oh, know. They're, well, they're and so, that's the hard part, though. Yeah. I mean, how often when you would do premarital counseling, would you see a couple actually come to the end of themselves and go, you know what? I don't think we are right for each other. Have you seen that very often? No, usually uh, the ones that have come um, in our, from our experience, yeah, they, they feel like they're supposed to be together and they're right. successful. They go right. through it. But some of them grow so much, they see things they haven't seen. And they have it, oh, oh, that, and then on the other side, they say, you know what? I'm so glad I did that because it's so much smoother on the other side. Okay. Joanne and I actually like going went through two rounds of premarital counseling. Two rounds? Right when we got engaged and right before we got married. So we were engaged for seven months. We okay. had a one-year courtship and a seven-month engagement. Okay. So we went through two rounds, and each time they brought up stuff that we had intense fellowship. <laughs> So you guys and know. when I said I was wrong, we moved on, and and so we pulled <laughs> boulders after boulders, and so. And when you realized her voice sounded like the Holy Spirit, right, right. I mean, yeah. <laughs> things go a lot smoother that way. Yeah. So we were looking at the end of one year of marriage, and we hear all the mi- okay. If you can get past the first year, yeah, the first year so hard. And you hard. see it a lot. But you know what? We had we had developed a strong friendship. Five years we were friends from when we first met right. to when we got married, and then we took that time, and really. Uh, focused on some issues that we probably wouldn't have seen if we just rushed in emotionally. And so we put the time in and pulled a lot of boulders out where the two rivers met. And so we were at the end of the year. So when is the bat? When is the... Like, uh, we got know, five when, days. Yeah, when are we going to break up? And it's like, this is great. Yeah, so... That's a beautiful thing. Not perfect, thing. but it, it was right. so much smoother. So did you encounter, because when I look back, I didn't... I mean, I got premarital counseling, but um, you just don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And so I realized, number one, well, God wasn't at the center of my relationship. So there was that. That's mm-hmm. like numero uno. No, yep. But number two, I had, there were so many unspoken expectations. Yep. And I think that is just as human beings that we have that continually, yep. whether it's in work relationships. So how do you and Joanne um, preempt the unspoken expectations? I think that's important that you deal with that before. We have like a 160 question questionnaire. Yes. So about all these different issues. on right. Parenting and raising and who would do this and who would do that. Right. And it just brings out, well, I never thought, I just thought my dad did that in their marriage. And right. so that's what I saw modeled. And right. So it's just an expectation. So for instance, I didn't realize, we didn't talk about this, that I was the security guard. You were the, in the security marriage. guard? I was supposed to be the security okay. guard in the marriage. Okay, meaning... Me. <laughs> well, I just grew up, you know, I didn't really lock the door at night, <laughs> living by myself. I'm, and so we're ready first night off for honeymoon. We, yeah. So we flipped the light off and uh, we're, we're kind of quiet. And then Joanne says, sweetheart, uh, did you lock, did you check and make sure the door the doors are locked and everything? And I said, no. <laughs> and then it was just quiet and she goes, well... So, oh, okay. So I went up and made sure I, was, I didn't realize I was security guard because her dad was That's security what he would guard. Do. Yeah, that okay. was what he would do. And I didn't realize I didn't, didn't have that model very well. In my so life. that, and that is what I find is like, that can cause so much contention, right? Um, because I'm, I'm sure from that day forward, you always checked before, before bedtime. Always. Because <laughs> you're perfect. Right. <laughs> One encounter, yeah. and you remember it oh, yeah. forever. Yeah. I'm a quick study. <laughs> You're a quick study. So I know for a fact that you probably still go through that. I don't know for a fact. I'm just winging it. Um, but you probably still go through that. Is there... I beat it. I just keep it locked all the time. <laughs> Bad locks. Yeah. So the unspoken expectation thing, Pastor. Yeah. Do you guys... 
purposefully do things as far as your communication to keep that maybe it's not like what do you do in your marriage to keep it healthy and thriving yeah well i think it's important that you have interaction every day but i think you need to set some time away and so we have date night okay and so, so i think it's so important that you continue to date your wife date your spouse yeah because what happens a guy has a mentality he has an achievement men are achievers yeah. task oriented right women are more relational right and so what i teach uh young ladies is oftentimes when you're courting or dating he's in task mode right so he instinctively knows what is uh to catch a bride right is that you need dying vegetation <laughs> and you need to listen and have long talks and yes and open car doors and, yes and and compliment Amen. And, and so that's just normal it's 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 very it's he's he's very motivated right to do those things right but as soon as he gets married it's not out of a bad place but he's in his mind back of his mind is like check got that so i'm on yeah. to my next thing and slowly but surely, your dying vegetation dies off, mm -hmm. and the the long talks and the yeah. and stuff like that. Because life happens, right? So the task for a man is to continue to date and court your wife. That's awesome. And so and so, and a young and a woman when she's courting, it's just naturally to to praise him and. And, oh, you're so wonderful. Yeah, the respect and Laugh at his jokes. And, and, and so you, you admire him and respect him right. and speak well of him. But as soon as marriage happens and he pulls away seemingly some of those things he was doing, sometimes a lady will tend to start being critical, mm. to criticize. Yeah. And so then you do that dance oh. and it slowly goes apart. So she is to date in court. And so my question to to married couples that are struggling, yeah. if how you're treating your spouse right now yeah. is how you treated them when you were dating them, would they have married you? Ooh. And so you're like, well, I don't know what that man wants. I don't know what that woman wants. Yeah, you do. You yeah. gave it to him when you're recording him. Right. Go back to and do your first work. That's Ephesians, uh, the Ephesus in Revelation. Right, right. Go back to your first love. Do there the beginning go. works. And start dating your wife again. Start dating your husband again. Wow. And, it's, and I'm, I believe God's speaking to marriages out there. Amen. Is they've gotten into this to where what was so, um, they're so motivated to give the other one what they needed when they're courting. Yeah. And now it takes the power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God and to, to give out. Because what they need, you don't need Amen. as much. That's so good. Do you have any resources uh, for married couples? I didn't know. So. Well, first of all, let me give you a resource. Uh, the Lord gave me a, um, a message for singles. Yes. Because I, when I was uh, teaching the singles, I'd have so many young ladies, especially young ladies, they would yeah. come up to me and say, where's my mate? Where's my <laughs> husband? And so I would, uh, I didn't have an answer for them. And, and as each year came by, they yeah. got more and more demonstrative. They grabbed my <laughs> collar and and grab me, and I, I said, "Lord, this is serious. My health's in danger here. <laughs> give uh, me a book. Give me something to help these ladies." <laughs> and all of a sudden, God started showing me yeah. uh, divine from the Word of God. He started speaking to me uh, and showing me how He prepares a man and prepares a woman. They prepare differently. How He brings them together in yeah. a divine encounter, and how uh, courtship takes place after that. And so, a book came out called "Where's My Mate." Where's my mate? And so that's at riverrockchurch.net. Yes. I also have a personal website. It's also on rickmcfarlandministries.com. Okay. Perfect. And so there's a that's lot of resources of on there. Okay. And so that book's on there. And so you can get that. And so Joanne and I, we do camp marriage counseling, do premarital counseling. Um, but I think your foundation is important. And so that book really lays a foundation. And I think it's even helpful for marrieds because I teach this course in third year ministry. Mm. You do. And the Mary says, if I only knew when I was 18, 19, when I was a teenager, what you're teaching me and the very things that you're doing and now it's like, yes, I can still court. I can still be in a courtship phase and go back and do the first things and actually see a marriage. So I see marriage has changed by That's that book awesome. as well. That's so great. Yeah. So um, what's your favorite part of pastoring? 
I totally jumped off that. Yeah. I'm jumping Whoa. all over the place. Whoa. <laughs> Well, may, maybe can we do we have time maybe to share how the church got started? Yeah, let's do that. Okay. Yes. So uh, I was we were in ministry school. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, we were in Bible school. Mm-hmm. It was a, in our first year, and so we had a couple that would sit next to us, and they were so excited. They were new to the Word of God, uh, especially what we were learning, and so uh, in between breaks, the 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 gentleman would be asking me questions. And so I'd be answering questions and stuff like that. And, and so he says, you know, Rick, um, I'm getting a lot from you as well as the teachers. Can you hold a Bible study for me and my family? Hmm. And I said, no. <laughs> he said, why? And I said, because I, I was in ministry for 16 years, right? pastoring singles ministry. And yeah. I just want to rest. I want to be at Bible school. This is time to decompress. I don't want to get back into it. Yeah. I just want to rest during this time. So he kept asking me, I said, fine, we can have a Bible study for your family, but invite no one. Oh, nice. So we did that. <laughs> I was just him and his family for the end of that year, all the way into second year, they graduated. Mm-hmm. And another couple said, uh, can we be the couple? <laughs> it's like, sure. And before long, they said, can we open this please? Yes. Wow. And so we went from one home to another home, went to a clubhouse, went to a hotel, went to uh, an actual retail spot, and, and now where we're at now. Wow. And it just, the Lord opened it up from a reluctant Bible study. Right. And a very so, reluctant, yeah. sounds like, no. Because I thought we would go back to Tulsa, start an extension school, and start a church. Mm-hmm. But I never wanted to start a church from the church I was in, and people leave that church right. and come to our church. I never would do that. I didn't want that. And so it worked out that we would start a church here because I never I was on my radar. Right. And so we were actually in the Bible study in third year ministry school and you pitched a project in ministry school. Uh-huh. So we pitched a church. No way. Uh, River Rock Church. And no we were way. still in a Bible study phase. And at the end of third year ministry school, we went full time on Sunday mornings and launched out as a church. So we uh, incorporated uh, Valentine's Day uh, 2014. Okay. Uh, we're the Lord's Valentine. Oh. And so it's been 10 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This past February. Wow. That's amazing. It's been 10 years. That's yeah. so great. Yeah. So what's your favorite part of being a pastor? You know, it's seeing people's lives change. Well, two things. I like to see people receive the word of God yeah. and it, see, it changed their life. But then I want to see unlocking the gifts and the anointings and release them into their ministry. Amen. And so a lot of churches that are about, the pastor's about, you're here for my ministry. No, part of being a faithful minister, of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, is to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. Amen. So I'm there for their ministry. And so I try as much as possible to recognize them and if they're prepared and ready to, in some form or fashion, to release them their gifts, release their callings. And so it's, it's amazing to see people blossom yeah. When they're given an opportunity to minister and use their gifts. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. So it's going on for 10 years. Where do you see it going to? Is it going to get bigger and bigger? A bigger building. A bigger building? Yeah, we've outgrown our building. and So we just, you know, I always want to keep a, a family culture, no matter how big you get. So that just training leaders that train leaders that have that, that culture in it. So I don't know how big the church is going to get. I've never prayed one prayer that the church grow. Wow. Uh, I used to when I was first starting in ministry, when I first started singles ministry, teaching yeah. singles. Yeah. I started with six. Okay. And so I said, if I ever get to 10, I'd actually, because we would get in a circle. Yeah. Because awkward to have two or three people stand up and preach at them. So we, we would just <laughs> right. kind of, I said, if we get more than 10, I'm going to get up and give my messages. And, oh, wow. And so the first six months we were in a circle until the time I got up and was teaching. But you know what? Back then I was so insecure. I was in Bible school and I was really... My value yeah. is in how, you know, people, right. what they thought of me and how many people right. were coming. And and so I would pray, Lord, c- bring the people, bring the people. And he wasn't bringing the people. Wow. And so, I said, okay, he needs faith. I go, I'm from a faith school. I'm going to put out faith chairs. <laughs> Lord, will fill, he's going to respond how to faith. You, how many did you put and out? I, said, I put probably about 50. Oh, no way. Oh, no. I put them out and, and they... And what they, did the singles say when they came and they, suddenly there's chairs out there? Yeah. They're they're like, uh, yeah, I have a lot of options. <laughs> and so he didn't fill them because I was needing... Yeah. I was needing for... For like validation. For valid, I was yeah. needing that. 
And wow. to where I got to the point, it was, son, my, if you never do a thing for me again, doesn't change my love for you. Wow. And I finally had my identity in his love for me as a son. And when I got to that point, the Lord says, I'm ready. You're ready. Wow. And then I said, well, I'd rather not. <laughs> right. Because, well, <laughs> I'd rather because I love that, people. Yeah, exactly. He's like and perfect. So, and so he's opened some major, some big doors. And, yeah. But I would never have been able to, to be in the place I am now and and actually be about the people instead right. of me. I wouldn't be able to, to maintain that. If so, I didn't go through that that time. Exactly. I want to bring it back to the the power and the the importance of the word. And how, you know, it really blesses me through your story how when you felt like the Lord was saying to come to Bible school, you weren't like, but God I already went to Bible school. I'm not gonna do that. Or I actually did you said, Am I a slow level? learner? Am I slow? <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Because I went, actually went to Bobby Indian's Bible school. After so Raymond. you went to that too. <laughs> and so I went to that school. But every time I know, the Lord told me to do it. And right. so when I came out here, um, actually, I, I came out of here and the Lord put a hook in in to be coming to this school because I had an end, there was an end result of what I saw the Lord wanting to do, me teaching a Bible school. Right. But I put my understanding on yeah. the Lord's leading. Hey, this is a Bible school. This must be where I'm supposed to be. Well, I'm... My deal was, is I thought I would come here and go back to Tulsa, start an extension right. school. Oh, oh, right. I had that. So yeah, I felt, I knew I was supposed to come to Karis Bible College, but my, I put my own spin on it. Yeah. And I thought it was something different. But uh, once I'm out here, you realize, no, you're supposed to be here. Yeah. And this Bible school. And so um, that's where it came out. So what would you say to somebody watching that's like, I don't understand how the word of God is even important in your story. Uh, keeping in mind that the whole basis of Caris Unplugged is all about how the word of God changes your life. So what would you say is the importance of the word of God in your life? Well, the word of God, we were uh, born of the word of God. James says, you're, uh, First Peter said, you were born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. So you are a word being. And so we, we feed our inward man with the Word. Amen. And so the Word of God is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Amen. But it's so many things. The Word of God is it's like a Swiss Army knife. Amen. It's light. It's good. It's rain. It's bread. Yeah. It's a sword. Yes. It's a lot. It just, for every possible thing of life, it's integral for. Yeah. And so the Word of God is, you have to understand that, um, it equips you for the very thing God's called you to do. That's Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Yeah. So it's profitable for teaching, instruction, reproof, for correction. But so the man of God be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yeah. And so it's for the equipping. And you said preparation times never wasted time. Yeah. And so the time I prepared in the Word and in ministry was not wasted. There was times it's like God, I'm ready. I'm ready. So no, not yet. Yeah. And so so I needed to come through three Bible schools. Not everybody's like that, but yeah. for what God's called me to do, I needed to come through three. And every time God did something unique in each one. And I think Karis Bible College, what was really necessary was it deals with the heart. Mm. The other two schools were more academic. Okay. Learning facts about God. Yeah. Karis Bible College deals with the heart beliefs. Mm, what do you believe good. about God? Right. What do you believe about yourself yes. at a heart level? What do you believe? Do you truly at a heart level believe God loves you unconditionally? And it challenges your heart at a heart level. And so uh, I just, that needed to happen in my life so I could develop that deep heart relationship with God in a, in a whole nother level that I hadn't before. And so, and then it, just the practical things in ministry school about starting our church that really equipped us for what we're doing today. But First and second year was about the heart, but yeah. your foundations of your relationship with God. And then third year is really about putting a tool belt and give you practical tools to be successful in the area of your calling. And so that's really what Karis Bible College did for me. Amen. And I would encourage anybody, if you want to check out our various ways of doing Karis Bible College, please go to karisbiblecollege.org. Uh, it'll come up at the bottom of your screen. And just check it out because, you know, ultimately, you know, when I came to Bible school, I didn't even know, number one, that that the Word could change you to that level. Uh, 
I thought that maybe God, since he created me, maybe he would understand my purpose, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. You usually should go to the creator yeah. right, to discover purpose, but it's only through the word of God will you discover that purpose. And yeah. and if, um, if you're watching and you need prayer, no matter what time you're watching, I want you to call our prayer line. The number's at the bottom of the screen. We have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, so I would um, ask you this, Pastor Rick, what would you say to somebody who says, I already know the Word of God and I think I've gotten everything I need to get out of it. Um, I don't I don't need to come to Bible school. What would you tell them? Well, I'm going to say you're, you're never at a point to where you understand the Word of God fully. Amen. The Word of God has no depth to it. No single verse has a depth to it. Yeah. It's infinite. God is infinite. And so Jesus Christ is the Word, and the Word is Jesus. So it's without death. So you can learn one thing, but then it's like an onion skin. Right. You learn at a whole nother level. Like when I first understood grace for the first time, I was like, man, where have I been? I've been out in the rain. (laughs) Exactly. Where has this been? And then uh, six months later, God would show me grace in a whole nother way. Right. And I'd wake up like, where have I been? I've been out in the rain. It's just like Nemo with Dory. She meets a new, hello, well, hello. And it's like, I understand, because every time an onion layer of grace would come, tears would come to your eyes. Amen. And so I'd understand. So there's no depth. Now, I I didn't say, I wouldn't say that every Christian has to go to Bible school or has to go to multiple Bible schools. Amen. Uh, But every Christian needs the Word of God. But let me say something about Bible school is that it has the power to co- have concentrated time mm-hmm. upon your heart to, to transform you in a very powerful way. Amen. Um, so I think Andrew talked, to, they calculated that going to Bible school is like 26 years of going to church. Yeah. In the time, the concentrated Word of God, Amen. it's like 26 years of going to church. And, I, and going to three Bible schools, I see people come in barely held, holding their life together with bailing wire and duct tape. <laughs> duct tape for real. That was and the, but they're just under the Word of God day <laughs> in, day out, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Amen. every week, every month. And they start changing and they don't even realize they're changing. Amen. And they go home on Christmas break and they say, you're different. And, and from the start, you know, I've seen them come in one way and leave the other way. Totally transform. It's the Word, the Word, the Word. Yeah. Wasn't their willpower? No. Wasn't them trying to change themselves? Right. They kept looking at Jesus uh-huh. and the power of Jesus. Amen. Second Corinthians three eighteen, <laughs> we with unveiled face, beholding yes. as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So the three steps I usually say is look at Jesus. <laughs> yes. Keep looking at Jesus and keep on looking at Jesus. Amen. It has the power to transform you. So that's what the thing about Karis. It, every course shows you Jesus. Yes, it does. And so we only have one course book. We yep. don't have a bunch of books about the Bible. It's the Bible. Amen. And the Bible shows you Jesus. Amen. And so every instructor is going to show you Jesus in a fresh way. And so the more you see Jesus, the more you're transformed because as he is, so are you in this present world. Yes, that's so good. And I loved about, uh, I think that's another thing. It's not only revealing Jesus, but putting you back to your relationship with God. Absolutely. Every, so it's, every teacher is taking you back to your personal relationship with the Lord. Yeah. Amen. And so it's the Word of God, you guys, that will that will radically uh, transform your life. And preparation time is never wasted time. And so it's pretty amazing to think, Pastor Rick, that right now you're in the middle of preparation time. Yes. And actually just the Christian life is prep- preparation for the for future. For where you're going. When we go, we're training for reigning. We will rule and reign with Jesus forever. And what we're doing now is actually training for reigning. Wow, and that's And so really this good. is preparation time for the next time. Yeah. Because we're not going to go up and, and, you know, kind of sit on a cloud and... Sing Kumbaya? And, and play harps and stuff. We're not? No, actually, we have, we're going to have <laughs> commissions. We're going to have a position in the kingdom. We have things to do, so... This is, so right now is preparation time. It is preparation time. That's a beautiful thing. And don't waste it. Don't waste it. I'm curious, what causes you to get out of bed in the morning? What is the My why? Wife. Your wife. <laughs> she says, go get a job. Go we go were... work. Get some money. <laughs> we were, that's funny. We were just talking yeah. about that before uh, we started filming. But my question is like, what's the why behind 
all that you're doing because there's lots of time that you put into yeah. um, to putting syllabus together yep. and then you're doing the teachers academy yeah. and you're you're pastoring a church and look, that's a full-time job it's so what, God, what is the why it's it's a passion that god created me it's a i'm in a position of the gifts and the abilities god's given me yeah he's moved me into Amen. Now, there's some times where I had to prepare. I wasn't ready to move fully into the very thing he's called me to do. Right. But I'm actually doing the thing that I'm so passionate about. I don't, this is, I don't do, I don't have any job. If wow. you love what you do, it's not a job. Amen. And, yeah, and so I, I'm, not, I'm motivated to go out because I have a passion for everything I'm doing right now. And so, but I had to go through some faithful time. I have to go through some preparation time. And stuck, and that's where my root system came in. Amen. It was winter in my life. Nothing seemed to be happening on the outside, but my root system was going down in Jesus. And so now uh, there's fruit coming out. Um, and yeah. so today I, I, I look forward to everything I'm doing today because that's what God created me to do. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. And I know that's probably challenged a lot of people viewing um, to say that it's not work. Yeah. Um, because you're doing what God created you to do, and not everybody has ever experienced that. Yeah. So I'm going to be speaking to people that what they're doing isn't satisfying because it wasn't what God created them to do, Amen. and they need to step out of their comfort zone. Maybe it's come to Bible school yeah. to prepare for the move in that area yeah. that God's called them to go into. And so a lot of people aren't willing to go out of the comfort zone and no. lay what's comfortable, what's knowable. God doesn't give you the plan. Everything's going to happen. No, they don't. He just gives no, he you doesn't. the next step. Right. Amen. And uh, but I don't know that a lot of people even want to ask them ask themselves that question because they might get the answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know there was a time in my life I just knew I wasn't doing at all what God wanted me to do. And I didn't want to slow down or sober up enough to ask. Yeah. And so um because I, we didn't know you didn't know him. No, when you I get didn't. to know him, you will. That's when you trust him. Amen. That's when you know He's the very, very best for you. Amen. And Even ways, in the midst of yeah. the backside of the toilet, yeah. right? So that's what Karis is about. It gets You get to know Him. Amen. And when you get to know Him, you fall head, head over heels in love because He's already head that's over that. heels in love with you. Amen. And so, and out of that comes the fruit of life. It comes out of knowing who you are, yes. not what you're doing. Doing comes out of who knowing. you are, knowing Amen. who you are. Man, that's awesome. So we're coming down to an end of our time together. And I just want to encourage you all that we have prayer ministers. Like I say, maybe you found yourself in any of these numerous topics or situations that I led us through today. But if you need prayer, if you want someone to stand in agreement with you, or maybe you want supplemental teaching on a certain topic that we covered today, I want you to call our prayer ministers. The number is on the screen at 719-635-1111. And they would love to pray with you. They have a whole database of all the supplemental teaching that we have in regards to all the topics that we shared today. Make sure and check out uh, Pastor Rick's website. And as well as, here is an easy step. Go to karisunpluggedgtn.com. We have a free resource there and things that you can sign up for that is an easy step in that direction. And Pastor Rick, thank you so much no, once again. Thanks for having me. All right. And we'll see you all next time here on Karis Unplugged. Remember, when you unplug from this world and you plug into the Word of God, your life will change and you'll change the world.